this crew is plugging an old oil well. It no longer has an owner, and it was never properly sealed. So for decades, it's been sitting here, pumping out environmental toxins unchecked. This is what's called an orphan well. You can actually smell the methane gas. And some of the stuff it leaks out can poison us. Benzene or xylene, we know they're carcinogenic. Across America, there are an estimated one million orphan oil and gas wells. That's like having an extra two and a half million cars on the road every year. Plugging them would stop any leaks and could help in our fight against rising methane levels. This is some low-hanging fruit. There's no other ways to abate these emissions other than to plug these wells. But the problem is, we don't always know where they are. We done pull wells all over. Nine times out of ten, we pulling them in the field. Surrounded by cows, horses. They've been discovered under houses and schools, and even in people's front yards. This has really been everyone's dirty little secret. So who's responsible for cleaning up this mess? And who's actually doing it? Nowadays, when companies are done with a well, they're required by law to plug it, essentially fill it with cement before abandoning it. But Americans have been drilling for oil for over 150 years. Before there were any regulations of any kind. So many early operators before 1950 would simply fill the holes with sand, cannonballs, or trash. Throwing down telephone poles, rags, trash, whatever, just to jam it up. Curtis Shuck is a retired oil exec. For the last three years, he's been plugging wells across the country with his nonprofit, the Well Done Foundation. We joined him on a well hunt in Louisiana. Here, he found an orphaned one right next to the bayou. If you didn't know what you were looking for, it'd be easy to miss. Look at this crazy, beautiful ecosystem that is right next to this, you know, this legacy well here. This water inundates this whole area. This goes underwater. Uh, and because the, the casing integrity has been compromised, it starts to bubble gas up around it. Today, it's harder for a well to become orphaned, but it still happens, especially when there are downturns in the oil industry. Usually it's because operators have gone bankrupt. So there's no responsible party left to plug the well. So they fall to the state. They become a ward of the state. Similar to an orphan child. And states often don't have the funds to keep plugging them all. I just couldn't believe my eyes that, you know, in any universe it would be okay to, to leave something like that behind, to walk away. To plug these wells, Curtis hires local guys that work in the oil industry. And they use the same gear to plug wells as they do to drill them. This truck right here is made for fixed wells. Nine times out of ten, you're going to have to have a water truck, a cement truck, and a rig. His team's plugging 75 wells in Louisiana over the next few years, like this one in Cattle Parish. It's typically a two-day process, beginning with the tubing that runs the depth of the well. We're washing a well, and what that means, we got to get all the pipes out. You get all everything out the well, and you put cement and water down the, down the well to kind of freeze it up. This well is about 4,000 feet deep. So Terrence and his crew will spend most of the day pulling out and stacking pipes. Usually, the pipes won't go to waste. Some of them will get sold. If not, they'll get recycled. The next day, the crew returns to plug the well. First, they have to flush down high-pressure water to clean out the hole. Then they add cement. They stop out of oil and they stop from uh, putting another well there. We've got cement to the surface. The methane emissions have been stopped. They cut the well off three feet below the surface. We'll weld the monument cap on the top, and then we'll restore the surface area like we were never even here.
But plugging is expensive. If you don't have the money to plug it on your own, you better learn to like looking at it. It can start at $30,000 and go up to as much as a million per well, depending on the geology. Landowner Hunter Lawler planned to foot the bill himself until Curtis adopted this well. Well Done pays for its pluggings with donations and carbon credits. Because you really wouldn't want an orphan well anywhere near where you live. They can contaminate groundwater and leak oil and salt, which create environmental dead zones. There have been uh, wells that have buildings built around them, and there have been explosions. The methane wells leak out is not only 84 times more potent than CO2, it's also flammable. Two dozen people were injured in 1985 when a Ross Dress for Less store blew up in LA. It was sitting on an abandoned well leaking methane. Smaller explosions have also happened in nearby Marina del Rey, Colorado, and Pennsylvania. Wells can also leak out carcinogenic or even deadly gases. Around 9 million people live within a mile of one of these wells in the U.S. A well that's properly plugged will stop leaking methane, except we don't know where to find all these orphan wells, so they could be releasing all this bad stuff and no one would know. Sometimes all that marks a century-old well bore is a tiny pipe or well casing, which nature can swallow up over time. To start trying to locate them all, Adam and Mary used state data to develop this map. So far, they've recorded 81,000 documented wells and identified hotspots in the South, Appalachia, and California. But that just scratches the surface. There's probably hundreds of thousands of undocumented orphan wells that we just don't know where they are. We don't have records. Curtis and his team have focused on Louisiana since 2021. This has been a huge part of this economy. Little wells in people's front yards. He first starts in state databases to get a general location of a well. Oftentimes, the coordinates of a well are not you know, they're very approximate. It's a ground game. Probably walk about, you know, anywhere from five to 10 miles a day. That's what he calls wildcatting. Then he has to determine if the well is a super emitter, emitting more than 22 pounds of methane an hour. That's the case with one he found in the woods behind someone's house. This well is particularly bad. You can actually hear the methane coming out. Yeah, isn't that crazy? What it's telling you is that it's, it's over the exposure level. And on this camera, you can see the methane. But the man living on the property had no idea it was here. Hi, right, sir. What are you doing? Oh, we're working on this orphan well here. Oh, 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 oh. Have you seen this one before? I didn't know that one was there. Yeah, here, come and check this one out. Check this out. Can you hear that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Curtis adopted this well and will plug it just like he did with the one up the road. But even after it's been properly closed, there's no guarantee a well will stay that way. Across the country in California, earthquakes can reopen plugged wells. Wells that are drilled through faults are going to be impossible to permanently seal. iReliefer runs Bubbleology, a company that measures air pollution to hunt down the biggest leaks. He installed a bunch of air monitoring instruments on his truck, Sister 2. It has a greenhouse gas analyzer, ozone, nitrogen oxides. We have one GPS directly at this point. If you don't know where you are, you really don't know anything. That's both philosophically true as well as scientifically. This gives a picture of the atmosphere above us as we drive. Iris says his monitors are so sensitive. We're able to see really small plumes even miles distant. As he drives around, he picks up plumes from abandoned wells throughout Southern California, like under homes in fancy La Brea, or here in Kern River. 
right now we're once again in areas of active oil production on all sides. We see elevated methane. When his instruments pick up a plume, he pulls over and takes an air sample. When we're ready to collect the sample, we um, crack this here just a little bit. It's not filling too fast. So today on our pass, we saw 14 ppm methane. That actually is one of the highest values that we've seen on land. Ira then passes his findings to colleagues at California government agencies. So what is the government doing about it all? Well, for the most part, it's left to the states to deal with the problem. Most states launched plugging programs in the 80s and 90s and have since sealed thousands of wells. But those programs have barely made a dent. Pennsylvania alone still has an estimated 200,000 unplugged orphan wells. States were, were woefully underfunded to address this project. So in 2021, Senator Ben Ray Lujan from New Mexico and Senator Kevin Kramer from North Dakota introduced the Regrow Act to address this problem on a federal level. It passed with the infrastructure bill signed by President Biden the same year and earmarked $4.7 billion for well pluggings. You're going to see funding go to the states where we know that there's probably the most uh, urban oil and gas wells across the country. The money will also get distributed to the Department of Interior to plug wells on federal lands. An allocation specific to orphaned uh, and abandoned oil and gas wells on tribal communities and pueblos. Even if it all goes perfectly, though, the act will only address documented wells. And that's less than a fifth of the orphan wells that might be out there. It's a tiny down payment on bringing our infrastructure to where it should have been 10 years ago. I'm not saying it's, it's not enough, um, but it's not enough. <laughs> In the last seven years, hundreds of oil and gas producers have declared bankruptcy. So as these companies struggle, more oil and gas wells will go idle. And as we wean off gas and oil for more renewable energy. Millions of wells are going to be abandoned in the next couple of years. So this is a serious problem. One solution is to get the oil and gas industry to front more of the bill. So that the cost doesn't have to be borne by the taxpayer. But Ira says we can't put all the blame on drillers. The reality is we want to live a life where we don't shiver all winter, to live in a place where we can move around with cars and airplanes. This all requires petroleum. So while we're still dependent on oil, Curtis and his team will keep plugging away, one well at a time. We keep getting further and further behind. It's time to stop talking. It's time to roll up our sleeves and get to work.